Hello and welcome to Authentic Thriving Podcast. I am Abia Sonia. I am your host. Authentic Thriving Podcast is all about our spirituality, our mindset, parenting, and all other things that will make you authentically thrive in life. On today's episode, I'm going to be talking about Understanding the roots of your people pleasing. Mm. Yes, I said it. People pleasing. Mm. Yes, yes. A lot of people love that one. And they have a problem with saying no to people. I want to tell you a story. I remember when I just relocated to the United Kingdom. I was a student then. I was, you know, I tried to get different jobs. They were all, you know, part-time jobs because that was all I could do. And it was a bit challenging there because I remember my other sister and I, we used to live together. And every Tuesday, we'll have to go to the corner shop to buy a newspaper for jobs. And they will have to ring the numbers for any job that has been advertised that caught our fancy. And then we'll call them to send us application form. They'll send us application form. We have to fill this form. <laughs> Imagine you will wait, they'll post, you will fill the form and they will send it back. We're doing this every week, every week, religiously doing this. And then sometimes we get called interview and sometimes we don't sometimes we get called for interview but we don't get a job and when we get a job we are so elated so sometimes those jobs were not permanent they were just maybe for a season and something like that so I finally got a job that was not just for a season and they were able to accommodate my status as a student and in terms of my lessons, my lecture times and everything. So I'll be able to attend lectures and still be able to work the hours that I was required to work. I was really, really excited. And this company, they were based in different locations. But when I finally got that um, part-time position, that was the old contract was ongoing, which was a short banker that that contract would be rolling over every month. I was really excited. I was placed in a particular house to work. And then we took, you know, we all went together as a group to Blackpool, <laughs> Blackpool Pleasure Park, Pleasure Park, yeah, that's the one. So we went there, we went to Blackpool and there were different rides, different rides all over the place. It was really, really good. So, a lot of people were entering the ride. That was the people that we went with. They were entering the ride. They were having fun. But I don't like heights, right? And I thought, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going on any of those rides. Everybody was taking turns. They were having fun. I was having fun my own way. I should have just stayed like that. But guess what? Then we got to the end of the journey where we are almost returning back to work. And my colleague was like, Sonia, you've not been on any ride. You've ate, you've drunk. You don't want to go on any ride or something. We've had our lunch now. We're about to go. You need to go on a ride. I was like, no, I'm not going on a ride. And everybody was like, Sonia, you're so boring. Sonia, you, you need to go on the ride. How can you come? So, Black Bull Pleasure Beach, and you, you will not go on the ride. That is so boring. What kind of experience would you tell people that you had in Blackpool? And if you come to Blackpool, you've not been on any ride you've not really been to Blackpool the bridge was on everybody was just like oh Sonia, Sonia, get on it Sonia, get on it, get on the big one get on the big one I tried my best to tell them I don't like heights I'm okay with my feet grounded to the floor I don't want to go they were like Sonia, go everybody, the pressure was on I'm like, oh, I don't want to be the damper to this outing where everybody were like, we had fun, but Sonia, she's so boring. She didn't go on the ride. We had fun, but Sonia, but but 
I didn't want to be the butt in this outing. So I went on the ride with some of my colleagues. But guess what? The person that instigated that push for me to go on that ride did not go on the ride. He just said, Sonia, go, go, go. And I was okay, we'll go with you, Sonia. We went. As the ride was going, hi, have you ever been to Blackpool? Pleasure Beach, the big ride. If you have not been, you would understand. As the ride was going, just going, I was screaming. At a point, I couldn't scream anymore. I screamed. And then I was like, ah, this is it, Sonia. You came to the UK to do this to yourself. I screamed my lungs out. I couldn't scream anymore. So I just placed my head. And suddenly I could feel the breeze. Going through my head. I was like, wow, this ride is really high. Let me just get down. Let me just get down. Let me just get down. And the ride was going. I was going over and over. And when it finally stopped, the ride stopped. I was like, thank you, Jesus. This is real life. There are people that I left here at the same place they are still here. So I'm still alive. That's what I was thinking. But noticing that though I'm down now, the, the hair going through my head still more could not think about the reason. And all of a sudden, my colleagues were coming closer to me. They were like, oh, Sonia, you look different. Sonia, you look different. Sonia, you look different. Like, give me Sonia, you look different. Nobody told me the right, normally transform people. And they were like, Someone noticed it. That's the same forward colleague of mine. So now what happened to your head? I'm like, what do you mean what happened to my head? And I touched my head. Lo and behold, I was wearing a wig. The wig, my precious wig that I brought from Nigeria. It had a fringe and a flip at the back. Not those wig that you used to wear the ink in those days. Yes, that's the one. And my precious wig has been, has been blown away. I was livid. I was like, you pushed me. You pressured me to enter that ride. But come to think of it, did he bundle me on that ride? Did he tie me to the ride? I bowed down to the pressure and I went on the ride. So I should have taken responsibility for what happened, but I was livid. I could not see anything else. I was livid. I was like, nobody should talk to me. Now my wig are like, so did you make that was a wig? I'm like, no, it's not a wig. I can laugh over it now, but believe me, I was not smiling when it happened. I was livid. I was absolutely livid. But you know what? Let me give you a vivid description of how I looked. I just relaxed my hair. Then I used to relax my hair. And the chemical burnt my scalp a little bit. So my hair was proper, proper flat, like really flat. It was, I think I left the relaxer a little bit too long on my hair. Because I didn't go to the salon. I didn't know any salon then. So I just put a cream on my hair. And I think my sister helped me to, to wash the, the relaxer out. So I must have left it a little bit too long. And my scalp was burnt. So the hair was sticking to it a little bit. So I just wore that wig, you know, to, to look more presentable because my hair was just a little bit too flat. And now that flat hair that I refused to come out with was there. And everybody was like, Sonia, you mean that was not your hair? I was so embarrassed. So it was a combination of frustration. I was upset with myself for bowing down to pressure. I was livid that, that my colleague had started it. I was disappointed that I lost my precious, precious wig. And I think that was the only one I had then. I was feeling a little bit 
shameful or embarrassed, not shameful, embarrassed, that my hair was not so flat and everybody knew I was wearing a wig. So yeah, people pleasing, that is what I got for people pleasing. And in case you're asking, what happened to your colleague? I did not let him rest. I was livid. I would not talk to him. And then he was like, okay, fine. Let's go to a wig store and find you another one. So we went to a wig store in Blackpool. You know, those ones that have the pink, the blue wigs and all of that stuff. And he finally bought me one and said, Sonia, I'm really sorry. I can see you're very upset. Can, you, can I just pay for this as a replacement? And guess what? That wig was a costume wig. But I didn't know that. I just accepted it and I wore the wig. But when I go home, I was like, why is this wig not staying well? I realized that it was so synthetic. It was itchy. It was a costume wig and I just could not be wearing that. So, yeah, that's what I got from people pleasing. In reflection now, why did I people please? I'll tell you. The people please because... I wanted to feel like one of the team. I'm a team player. So I went against my better judgments, forgetting that I was wearing a wig. I gave in to the pressure, as peer pressure. I gave in. And another thing again, I didn't want to be the damper of the um, outing. So I said, oh, I don't want to be the one that everybody will ask what happened. I was like, oh, it was good, but, but. So I didn't want to be the clause. So I, that was the reason that I people please. Another one, again, I didn't want people to feel like, to, to tag me as someone that was boring. So I didn't want to be boring. I wanted to be interesting, you know? So I bow to pressure. So my question is, if you're a people pleaser, you need to understand why you're a people pleaser. I just told you why. People please because I wanted to be part of the team because I didn't want to dampen the outing. And also I wanted to be seen as interesting and not boring. That was the reason why I went. Why are you people pleasing? Think about it. Ask yourself, how come I am always giving in to pleasing other people but myself? Are you people pleasing at work? You need to find out why. Are you people pleasing at home? You need to find out where. In a social gathering, we are with your friends. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> do you people please? If you do, find out when. Why? Because until you find out the roots of your people pleasing, you will not be able to stop it. You need to be able to identify the triggers. Is it that when people put pressure on you, you give in? Or when people emotionally blackmail you, you give in? Or you give in to fit in? Like I did. Do you people please to fit in? Do you people please because you want to be seen in a certain way? You want to be seen as a good to shoes. You want to be seen as someone that has arrived certain status. So when people ask you for things, even when you don't have, you go and borrow or you go out of your way to displease yourself and please other people. You need to find out the reason why you are people pleasing. Because people pleasing is dangerous. People pleasing will enable you to walk in this alignment with your values. And when you're not working in alignment with your values, what happens is that you feel empty, you feel unsatisfied, you feel unfulfilled, you feel frustrated, you feel overwhelmed, and you don't know why. Often you don't know why. It's because you're a people pleaser. You people please, and then people don't want to even, you jump the ocean for people, but some people don't even want to. Those same people don't want to even cross the border for you. 
and they start feeling like, what do I mean to them? How come they mean? I, I show to them that it means so much to me, but they don't show that it might mean so much to them. So you start feeling bad. Sometimes people pleasing can affect your identity. People pleasing will keep you in the wrong group where you are not appreciated just because you want to love the status of that group that you join in. So you want to be seen as one of them, but you're not treated as one of them. People pleasing has made people marry the wrong person today. They went into the wrong marriage because they wanted to please their parents. Or maybe they don't want to be left out as the only person that is not married in the friendship group. People pleasing will make people rather please their boss than to please their immediate family, their children, their spouse. People pleasing will make you take that last, last night order that is less than maybe you tell people my orders are within 72 hours and someone will bring their orders within 24 hours. But when you can't meet up with the order, or maybe everything is not perfect, they are having a go at you. People pleasing is draining. It's draining. It never ends well. You always end up getting hurt. So to all fellow people pleasers out there, I would say stop it. And I'll tell you how I put a lead on it. Because that's the only place that I, I've really noticed it that I've done that in my adult age. So how did I stop it? I have to redefine my goals. I have to learn how to define having fun. How do I have fun? Everybody can go out together. You choose how you have your phone. I choose how I have my phone. I don't drink, I don't smoke. So just because you're having fun drinking and smoking doesn't mean I have to join you in your drinking and your smoking to have fun. So I can have fun my own way. It might be dancing to the music. It might be telling jokes. It might be just, you know, the listening ear in the group when everybody talking. So choose the way, define yourself, define who you are, what you are, what you believe in. When you define that, you will be able to work on your people pleasing. And also the guilt as well. Don't feel guilty when you set boundaries and within it. Yeah, people pleaser, you need to set boundaries communicate your boundaries and you also respect that boundary. So if you tell people that once it's nine o'clock, I don't take calls, you don't then call the person after nine o'clock or take the calls after nine o'clock because you've set a boundary, it shows that you've not respected it. So I did you expect other people to respect your boundaries. So setting boundaries is one thing, However, you need to also communicate it to the next person and also respect it as well. You need to demonstrate that you respect the boundaries that you've set. So I'll recap again. Know who you are, identity. Know your values. Know what you stand for. Communicate your values. Also maintain your value and respect it. That was the way I was able to end people pleasing. Right now, I can be in the midst of people that I respect, I adore so much, and my value stands. And I'll raise my head and communicate it effectively, and I'll have no regrets at all. Even at work, when we go out at work, I will have fun my own way. I don't have to drink or smoke. I can play good music and just dance. I would dress the way that I want to dress. I would dress according to the way I want to be addressed. I will attend the things that I know that is in alignment with my values. Even at work, I will only do things. I will even work for people that I know their values are in alignment with mine. So you need to go on a self-awareness journey. Grow that backbone. Bye 
consistently sticking to your values and your goals and your boundaries. That is the way to stop people pleasing so you don't end up. Mine was a lost week. Yours might be losing your dignity, losing your, your self-respect, losing your happiness, losing your money. We are giving money to people that you don't even have, that you were supposed to use for your own project. People pleasing is quite deep. It's high time you understand the root cause and do something about it. I just hope that you've been able to get something from this and begin to grow that resilience that you need to bounce back from people pleasing. You need any help with this? Reach out to me. My name is Abia Sonia on Instagram, on YouTube. If you want to watch this podcast live in terms of the video, my name is Abia Sonia on Facebook and on LinkedIn. So, like, share, subscribe to your friends and family. Keep sharing with them. Okay. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast today. I've been vulnerable here today. Don't start laughing at my week, right? <laughs> oh, thank you so much for joining me and have a blessed day. Until I come your way again, take care and God bless.